All right, well, now is the time where we take a few minutes in our service to remember Jesus around his table. And it's a time for Christians to remember Christ and what he's done on their behalf at the cross. Uh, in a few minutes, we're going to take a piece of bread and a small bit of juice. It's important for us to remember that these are just symbols. They're symbols of the body of Christ and the blood of Christ that was offered on behalf of all of those who would put their trust in Christ at the cross. We're going to be opening our Bibles this morning because uh, it's in our Bibles that we find the truth about who Jesus is. So some men are going to be coming down the aisles. If you don't have a Bible, just raise your hand. We'll get one to you. And if you don't actually own a Bible, we would love for you to keep this for yourself so that you can begin reading God's word for yourself. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at a passage that explains to us why it was that Jesus performed the miracles that he did. So if you have your Bibles, please turn with you to Mark chapter 2. We're going to be looking at verses 8 through 11 together. And this is a familiar miracle of Jesus. Jesus is going to be performing a miracle. And uh, this morning, what we'll see is that he heals a paralytic man. But in order to have a proper understanding of this miracle, it's very important for us to understand why he performs this miracle. And this passage helps us see that. But Jesus' message wasn't the only message during his earthly ministry. Uh, there were many Pharisees, there were many scribes and teachers of the law, and they had messages of their own. And their messages had one purpose, and they wanted to accrue a following for themselves. And the logic was the more followers that a man could have, the more the man could deceive those followers with lies apart from God's word. And eventually he could become a very wealthy man. But Jesus was the son of God. And as such, he had the true message. He had the only message, the true message. Uh, his words originated from God himself. He tells us in John 7, verse 16, my teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. What we'll see today is that Jesus' miracles prove that he has the authority to forgive sin. Uh, the setup for our passage is that Jesus has been teaching in the northern region of Galilee all over, and he has returned to Capernaum. And he's been teaching, and people are amazed and astounded at his teaching because his teaching has authority. And you can see that in chapter 1, verse 27. The people are just amazed at the kind of authority that Jesus spoke with. But these Pharisees, these scribes and teachers of the law, they refused to accept that Jesus possessed that authority. The reason why was because that presented a threat to them and their livelihood. So in the beginning of chapter 2, in verses 1 and 2, uh, you see Jesus, and he is back in Capernaum, and he is teaching in a home. And there are many, many, many people gathered there. A crowd is there. And we know this story. Uh, four men, in verse 3, bring this paralytic man to this home. And because of the crowd, they go up to the roof and they cut a hole in the roof and they lower the man through the hole in the roof. And in verse five, after seeing the faith of those men, Jesus says to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven. And then in verses six and seven, we see the response of these scribes as they wonder privately to themselves that Jesus is blaspheming because only God can forgive sin. So we're going to start our passage by reading in verse 8. And as we do, notice in verse 10 the reason why Jesus performs the miracle that he does. Immediately, Jesus, aware in his spirit that they were reasoning that way within themselves, said to them, Why are you reasoning about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and pick up your pallet and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. And then Mark adds, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, get up, pick up your pallet, and go home. The miracle occurs in verse 11, where Jesus says, I say to you, get up. In the speaking of those words, Jesus actually gave that man the ability to stand on his feet. It's important for us to understand that, but our focus really needs to be back in verse 10. Because in verse 10, we see where Jesus explains the purpose behind his miracle. See how Jesus says, so that you may know that the son has authority on earth to forgive sins. Then he says, I say, get up. I say, get up so that you may know that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins. 
And the you there in verse 10 is a plural you. And Jesus is talking to the scribes. He's not talking to the paralytic in verse 10. He's talking to the scribes so that they would know that Jesus has the authority to forgive sins. Jesus is saying to them, my miracle will overrule the effects of sin in this world. And what that does is that proves that I have the authority to forgive sin. My miracles overrule sin to prove that I have the authority to forgive sin. And this just isn't uh, an argument or this isn't just a line of reasoning. This is very important to us today. And the reason why is that because Jesus has the authority to forgive sin, we know he has the capacity, the capacity to satisfy the Father's wrath against that same sin. And that's why we want to remember Jesus this morning. He steps into this divinely orchestrated scene. He heals this man to prove that he has the authority to forgive sin. And we can take from that, that from that authority, he has the capacity to actually go to the cross and to satisfy the Father's wrath against everybody who would put their trust in him. So that's what we want to remember about Jesus this morning, that he went to a cross and because he possessed the authority to forgive sin, he was able to actually satisfy God's wrath against you, Christian, for your faith in Christ for what he would do. So today, when the elements come to you, think on those things. Think on the miracle that Jesus performed. Think about what that communicates to us about his nature and what that means for you about what he did on your behalf at the cross. And uh, then when you've taken time to prepare your heart, take the elements on your own. If you're here today and you are not a follower of Christ, we want you to know three things. Uh, First is that we're very thankful that you're here this morning. Uh, It is our privilege to put on display what God has done in our lives right in front of you as we sing, as we greet one another, as we listen to the reading of scripture and teaching. That is our privilege, and so we're thankful that you're here. Uh, Second thing we want you to know this morning is that if you're not a follower of Christ, then this is a time for believers, people who submit to the lordship of Jesus Christ at the Lord's table. So when the elements come to you, just pass them to the person next to you. But the most important thing I want you to remember this morning is in verse five in our passage. Jesus looks to the paralytic, he sees the faith in the other four, and he says to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven. This is salvation that's taking place right in front of your eyes as you read this passage. Here's a man who scripture gives us no reason to believe that he was a believer or a follower of Christ entering into this passage. But in this passage, Jesus tells him, your sins are forgiven. Sins are forgiven when a person sees Jesus and comprehends Jesus and understands Jesus for who he really is. The one who has authority as the son of God to forgive sin and the one who has the capacity to satisfy God's wrath in your place. As you look at this and as we're passing the elements, just consider the power and the opportunity that is available to you today, the salvation that is available to you if you would see Jesus the same way that this man saw Jesus. Jesus knew that this man saw him rightly. Jesus had the ability to see into his mind and his heart and knew exactly what he was thinking, just like he knew what the scribes were thinking in verses six and seven. So uh, if you have any questions about that after the service, there will be someone up here at the front to your left. Uh, They would love to listen to you and talk to you and pray with you. They probably have a Bible and they can open their Bible and show you from God's word how you can know Christ personally. So men come in service. And then I'll be back in a few moments to pray.